Focus on Diversity with Troy Shaw. Hello, my name is Troy Shaw, your host of the Focus on Diversity program, and we are broadcasting at what is deemed the worst city in America to be if you're African American. That's Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's first introduce our guest. She is Robin Hamilton, a graduate of Marquette University and a producer with the Focus on Diversity program. Also, we have Michael Holt. He is the editor of the Milwaukee Community Journal. And we have Victor Barnett. He is the president and CEO of Running Rebels. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin our program. As I stated, this is the considered Milwaukee, the worst city in America to be if you're African-American. That's why this program is going to be dedicated to talking about the plight of black people. First, we're going to start off with Michael McGee, Jr., Michael McGee in trouble again. On Memorial Day, Michael McGee Jr. was arrested by Milwaukee police in a case that is being jointly investigated by federal and state authorities. Michael McGee is under investigation on potential public corruption charges. Now, here's where we're going to start off here with this. I mean, let's talk about the career of Michael McGee Jr. There's been so many people that you need to talk about the black plot. You need to talk about Michael McGee. Well, we're about to do that. What do you think, Michael Holt? of Michael, McG Michael McGee's career? Well, I've watched uh, Mike Jr., as many people affectionately call him, from young lad on. You know, a, a defining characteristic of Mike McGee Jr. is when he initially ran for alderman, uh, he didn't show up for a public debate uh, with his opponent because he was out leading a demonstration mm -hmm. against a car dealership that had ripped off a black family. That's and I think that was really endemic of, of, of his whole philosophy. Mm -hmm. He has for years been uh, a community activist. He has fought the good fight. He brought excellent credentials to the automatic race. Uh, and he also was able to, to draw in young people like few other aldermen or elected officials have been able to do. You know, I don't think you can separate his public persona a, a, away from what he actually brought to the table in terms of his, of his community activism. And I think that's what that's, I think that's very, very important to a degree. But why are his critics not looking as his career? Robert, I'm going to go to you next. I mean, why do you think that his critics don't look at his career? And what, are you, what is your perception of his career? Um, I think the critics are looking at his career in the aspect that it's been filled with turmoil and just corruption. And my personal opinion on Michael McGee, he's been elected in 2000, since 2004, and it's been filled with nothing but scandal and lies. And, and just, I'm not a fan of Michael McGee, I'll just say that. And he's supposed to be the very person that's supposed to be looking out for the community. He's for the people. He's for for the cause, but he's not, quote unquote, sticking it to the man. He's stealing and taking bribes from people in the community. So what does that say about him? His cause, he's, he's, I just. Well, I'm we're going to go into some of those problems. And <laughs> yeah, he, but see, but, but here's the thing. Okay, now I'll be, I'll be straight up with my audience. I went to high school with Michael McGee. I served on a board with Michael McGee. And my impression of, the, of his career is that he tends to do, he tends to do things that many people in elective office tend not to do. They're hands off, they're, you know, let the police either deal with this situation or let some community organization deal with it. Michael McGee seems to be hands on. What do you think, Victor? I've been doing a lot of community work and like Mr. Holt stated, uh, a lot of times when we were at events or things in the community, Mike was there. Uh, I think he did do a lot of positive things for our community. I really didn't get involved as much in his um, political career, but as far as a person and things in the community, I think he did fight some of the fights that uh, the community wanted um, somebody to step up and fight for them. So um, that part of it, I think he did some good things in our community. But as far as the other side, um, I really didn't get a lot involved in uh, political and, you know, some of the other side of what Michael would Well, see, there's people about. right now who are literally jumping out of their seats. You're not talking about his problems. You're not talking about the the uh, the assault that he apparently was going to make on a, on a young woman. The co the co conversations he had with two young girls in a, in a bus that was seemed to, that seemingly seemed to be not uh, very good for those young years and the constant uh, being in the paper on negative oriented things. Why aren't you talking about that? Well, you know, number one, when we deal with the uh, allegations, we must take in consideration they, that's what they are, they're allegations. And, you know, I've talked to him throughout his career. And 
he has uh, a different interpretation of each of these incidents that, that you can bring to the fore. The Mike McGee Jr. I know is the one when an 11-year-old girl who lived literally within a few yards of the Milwaukee Community Journal offices was raped by 20 young thugs while other aldermen were sending out press releases. He was there. He went and met with the family because I accompanied him. He met with the family. He, he had actually helped him get counseling from the young girl. And then as we were leaving, I saw him reach in his pocket and give some money to the family. And then we canvassed the entire block, talking with neighbors, and he conducted his own investigation and was responsible for the apprehension of many of these thugs. Now, people can say what they want, but I have not seen a proactive alderman. You know, his official role, from my perspective, was to shake the tree. He went in with that intent. People recognized what his role would be, what his job would be. And in that process, he angered a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But would we be talking about Frank Jude, if it went for Mike McGee? Mm -hmm. Would we be talking about... Uh, uh, participation on the city level? Will we be talking about how businesses exploit the community and don't offer jobs to young folks or community residents without Mike McGee? He served a specific role. And because of that, there's a big bullseye in his chest. That's it. And you know what? I agree. There's too many. He has lots of problems in his campaign and in his political reign. And maybe I need to go back and recant my previous statement because he has done a lot of good in community. But he also seems a little hypocritical because the same community that he's been helping out, these allegations are... The, within the same community that he's doing harm against. So that that's why I have these negative feelings toward him, because how are you doing good on one hand? You're helping out, you're getting the word out, you're saying, like, we need to help, we need to take action in our own communities, but then you're also stealing and taking money, or supposedly stealing. That's why I haven't, you know, he seems a little wishy-washy. And so. when we come back, we're going to continue with our Mike McGee discussion. Stay with Focus on Diversity. We will be right back. Since 1985, Sprecher Brewing Company has been committed to brewing a diverse variety of quality beers and sodas. Along with their commitment to a diverse product, they also have a strong commitment to diversity. Sprecher Brewing Company is proud to be a sponsor of the Focus on Diversity program. We are honored to participate in Milwaukee's great brewing tradition and we're grateful for the opportunity to present our best to you. 